everyone, this is Jazz here, and this is Tailored Tales. This is what I believe I could be a novel. And let's just jump right on into it. New game. Would you like to skip the intro? Here we go. Alright, so that was a little intro. And, uh, I'm really feeling this little uh, redhead right here. I don't know, I think it's cute. Tane Prince, age 21, his job is a student clerk at the convenience store. Mason. Height, 171 centimeters. Is it centimeters? Eh, 5'7. During your last party in college, you met a drunk Kane, which friends seem to have abandoned him. You eventually help him to get home safe. Half a year later, you meet him again at a jewelry store, and he's stealing. You call him out, and he makes a mad dash for it. You see, you see him again at the convenience store he works at, and he pretends that he doesn't know what you're talking about. You warn him to be careful, otherwise you'll report him as a thief just college. That should keep him in line, right? Maybe. Really want this dude. He's cute. So I'm guessing you probably gotta do so many of the ones that they already have first. Alright, Neil Forrester, age 24. Job intern executive. Height 176 centimeters or 5'9. When you were younger and much more of a tomboy, you and Neil happened to cross paths when he decided to run away from his parents. You forced you forced him to act like him a proper child. Oh my gosh. That is awful. Years later you two meet as adults, except Neil doesn't recognize you. No, he has uh, he was under the impression that you were a boy. The misunderstanding leaves Neil embarrassed. Neil's attitude towards you is a cold and cruel and you wonder if that sweet little boy he used to be was just your imagination. You try your best to befriend him, but Neil will have none of that. How dare you. But what happens when you finally get under that cold exterior he's cracked in? Will he be that sweet little boy again? Alright, now... This one. Dimitri Kotok. Kotok. Kotok! <laughs> Nice age 19. He's a student part timer at a cat cafe. Oh god, that has to be like one of the best jobs. He's 184 centimeters or 6'1. Very tall boy. Dimitri looks a lot older than he really is, which is why he thought you thought he was your age 17 when you met up when he was only 13. Oh my god. A few years later, and you meet him again. But this time you find out. He's the little brother of your boyfriend. Things don't work out between you and your college boyfriend, so you break up. Typical. When you start your boutique and find yourself with an empty spare bedroom, you wonder what to do with it until you come across Dimitri again. Now a college student looking for a place to live. When you offer him a place at you, to your surprise, he instantly agrees. It'll be fun taking care of a little brother, right? That sounds awful. Let's go with this one. I'm all for the... <laughs> it looks like I'm 
vampire here. Alright, I'm all for the whole, like, childhood friend. Let's go for it. Create your character. In Taylor Styles, Taylor Tales, God, you play a young woman who has just opened her own boutique. You can determine her skin, hair, and eye color by using the color swatches on the left of the icons. These choices will reflect in your special CGs that will appear throughout the story, so choose wisely. Don't forget to equip your free starter sk shirt, skirt, and sandals. Alright, let's just uh, blast through this, I guess. We're done. So this is gonna be her. I wish she had different clothes and different shoes. But whatever, she's cute. Joe Zelina. That's kinda cute. No. Our name is going to be From Sirens Lament. Sirens Lament. My gosh. English. First, that's cute, but no. That go with Knox. Oh, Johnny Knoxville. Yes, I named my characters after people I like. Johnny Knox. Correct. Sunshine Boutique. Uh. I'm just gonna go with Knox. <laughs> yes, we will name our store after us. Knox Boutique. Cute, I guess. <laughs> Lila Knox. Knox Boutique. This is correct. Cute. Change bullet. Welcome to the main menu. Start off your journey. Why don't you read the first chapter before you go on the road? Continue it. I can do that. Neil. She has a different name. Neil. Jeez, that was loud. Alright, Taylor Tales is a lighthearted game, but each group brings its own unique set of warnings and tricks. Would you like to review these? Yeah, sure. Alright. Uh, rudeness, alcoholism, minor character, minor character death. Jeez. <laughs> Nosebleed. Alright, his behavior, he's not very dominant. He doesn't mind the aggressiveness of me. He's never rough, gentle most of the time. He's mostly vanilla in the kinkiness. Confident, hesitant, and curious. Flustered, occasionally. Cockiness, surprisingly low. And libido, average. Cool. I, so I just picked the. All right. This okay. This would be the f good first one. Yeah. This would be the good first one. A little bit. Okay. All right. And here we go. Before you begin your story, would you like to review the clothes? Yes, yeah, sir. As you play the story, you sometimes be prompted with a fierce or kind choice. That will determine which ending you'll get. 
Your fierce choices are usually more bold and flirty. Your time choices are usually more reserved and thoughtful. Neither choice is the right one, so pick whichever you, one you feel like. See, okay, I think you're actually lying to me at this point, because there's no way that neither one of them are right or wrong. <laughs> I've played these types of games. I know what this is about. During the game, this window will contain most of the shortcuts you can use. Start auto read, use eh to adjust the speed and click eh to pause or auto read. Why do I need a pause? Oh, pause auto read. Got it. Okay. And the book is a history log. This is to save. Uh, to load and save files. <laughs> the light bulb is for night, light, dark mode. And those will work. You can switch between light or dark text. No way. And then, ah, to adjust the text size. Let's see. No, okay. Huh. No, I kind of like that. Save. Load. Oh, it doesn't, oh god, I'm blind, but not that blind. <laughs> it's so big. Okay. Alright, and then let's. Got it. Okay. Some shortcuts that don't have a button, just hold it down, will skip text. You shift to hide the text. <laughs> That's for your screenshots. F1 to bring in in game volume. And F4 to play in full screen. That's it. Enjoy the game. Don't tell me what to do. Alright, I've been playing the entire day with my friends at the local playground. We played all sorts of games. Tag, cops and robbers, hide and seek. It was all so much fun. That's three games. The sun is starting to set and all the other kids have gone home already. I should probably head home as well. My mother is making dinner and is waiting for me. That's so sweet of her. I look down at my, at my hands, which are dirty. And there's a cut on my knee. Oh no. Okay, <laughs> <Dang>, great. <laughs> my clothes have spots of green from rolling around in the grass with the other kids. And she's not going to like this. I'm probably going to get yelled at again. But I have to go home. Good child. It's fun to be a child. To play and have fun. Mother, I'm home. I yell when I open the door. Mother's in the kitchen preparing food. Okay, who calls their mom actually mother? Because it's, it's... I don't know, I feel like the rich tsunami kids. Mother. Only moms that want to be called mother are called mother. Their kid just doesn't call it. Anyway, I'm just going to call her mom. Mom is in the kitchen preparing food. Wash your hands or sit down for dinner, she yells back. Obediently, I walk towards the kitchen to wash my hands. Oh. Lyra, she gasps in. You're completely filthy. Were you playing with the boys again? Look at your clothes. What am I going to do with you? How I wish you were more girly, but that's rude. I look down at the floor, and Mother is always saying things like this to me. I'm just playing around with the kids. I don't care about my clothes. Is she? Alright, yes, you're a child. Come on now, wash up and sit down. I have a surprise for you after dinner. Oh, that's awesome. I love surprises. My eyes light up and a present. I w that's unexpected. I hurriedly wash my hands and sit down. When dinner is served, Mother keeps making comments how I shouldn't play so roughly and I should keep my clothes clean. Clothes clean. I finish up my food, eager for my present. Where is the father? Time for your surprise, Lyra, she exclaims. She walks out of the room and returns soon after, holding a large white box. She hands it over to me. Gleefully, I open it up. A bunch of pink fabric is in the box. A bit confused, I pick it up. I'm staring, I'm staring at a little pink dress in my tiny hands. I love it. It feels smooth against my skin, like it's really expensive. The faint crystals embedded into the hem sparkle brilliantly. 
I'm horrified. It's like a princess dress. I hate princess dresses. They get in the way of playing. Wouldn't you simply look adorable on me? Grandma made it for you today. Oh, well, I'm currently in sixth grade. No gross, or I guess it would. Oh, see, okay. It's like, it's, it's a present somebody saws, but it's also like, you don't say gross about it. You're just like, eh, I don't really want this. this is, okay, this is me, though. I, I just go with it. I guess it would. Do you want to try it on? I sigh, then take that dress from my hands. I really don't want to wear it, so I come up with a plan. I want to go out to play again, can I? I don't want to put it on now, or I'll make it dirty. I lie. Mother nods. Alright, fine. Be back by seven, and don't talk to strangers. I'm a child. Of course I'm a child. Okay. That was a... That was a weird... That's a weird sound effect. Alright. Quickly! I leave the house and run away. I definitely did not want to wear a pink dress. Well, it's dark now. The sun is completely gone as I arrive at the playground. It's dark and kind of scary. I kick a rock in frustration. Mother can't make me wear those stupid girly dresses, always telling me to dress up and look like a girl. I hate it. See, okay, you should tell your mother that, but without being like, it's gross. She'd be like, Mom, I'm not into it. I don't like all those frilly dresses I'm looking to, and it just gets in the way of playtime. See, you can be cute and still have playtime. Saw it. Anyway, my friends always make fun of me when I show up in frilly dresses and I can't play because Mother doesn't want it to get dirty. I just want to go outside and play with my friends. But the playground is empty, and since most of the kids have curfew, they are gone. They've already gone home. So, you don't have a curfew, but your mom doesn't want you to get your clothes dirty. See, okay. Sounds like your mom just cares about appearances. I'm alone, and I don't like it. Not even Cody is here to play with. You don't know. Now I'm thinking about it. Mother is a much more appropriate. She seems like a mother. Frustrated, I kick a rock into the blue dome on the playground. It makes a hollow sound as it bounces off. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Who's there? I'm startled by this sudden voice coming from the dome, and it seems like someone was hiding there. Keep quiet or come out. Come out, I yell, wanting to know who it is. It takes a while, but within seconds, I see a small boy crawling out of the hole. He's dirty, too! At first, I see a bush, a bush of purple hair emerging from the, to from the hole. God! Then I see the rest of his body come out, revealing the dirt on his expensive looking clothes. Oh, excuse me. How do y'all know? His eyes are big and red, looking at me in fear. Though that's not red. That's not red. I don't recognize him at all. Grr. I'm not going to hurt you, I tell with a big smile. You're new here. What's your name? The boy says nothing, and he looks down at his shoes and his feet. They're covered in dirt as well. Well, yeah, he's covered in dirt. We get it. Where are you from, I ask, continuing my questioning of this strange boy I've never seen before. You're definitely not from around here. The boy makes a tiny sniff and then rubs his nose with the cuff of his sleeve. 
Did you run away from home too? I asked him. I suddenly feel sad about my own situation, running away from my mother and dressed like that. Um. You're not going to tell them, are you? The boy finally says. He sounds like he's been crying a lot. I smile at him. Of course not. We can be runaways together. Hmm? He looks up at me and a spark returns to his eyes. What are you wearing right now? He asks. My mother wants me to wear clothes. I don't want to, I say. I'm always forced to dress girly. Uh. Mother and father always dresses that way. Do you crave? They yell at me when I get in trouble. I give him one look over again. He's entire. He's entirely dirty in his clothes. Oh my god, we get it. It's dirty. Everything's dirty. They must be real mad at you right now then. Yeah. The boy gives a shy nod and I I don't want to go back. I always have to study and I can never go out and play. I hate that. I just want to play as well. Get as dirty as I want, I explained. Everyone wants to be hmm. dirty. Mother and father won't allow me to play with any boys, so I ran away. Who are you supposed to play with? Birds? Well then, I'll play with you. Excitedly, I grabbed his hand and dragged him to the side of the other, to the slide at the other end of the playground. Your parents aren't here to say no. <laughs> the boy finally manages to smile at me, and I give him a big toothy grin back. Toothy, toothy. Everything's dirty now. Everything's toothy. Oh my god. He climbs to the top of the slide and then sits down to slide down. He sits down to slide down. I can hear him giggle as he goes down. I hate slides. It's a personal note. I don't like going down the slides. Like at all. Anyway, I quickly climb up as well and follow after him. It's so much fun to play with this boy. He's a bit shy and hesitant at first, but a couple minutes in, and he's the one racing to the top of the slide. Huh. Mother and father would definitely not allow me to play like this, I say. Definitely not with other kids my age. Hey, I'm seven. How old are you? I ask with a wide smile. I imagine that's how kids, you know, talk to each other. The boy slides down again and then turns to face hmm. me. I'm eight. You know, boy is older than me. Or Ray, I tell him. Thumbs up. He gives me a bashful smile back. Oh, that's kind of cute. Then I grin at him and tap him on the arm. Tag, you're it. I call out. I dash away from him. Hmm? He looks at me questionably. Simply standing in the room, same spot. So does he not know how to play tag? Oh, this is sad. It breaks my heart. I run back and forth in front of him, but he's not moving to chase me at all. Why aren't you chasing me? You're it. You know what? This kind of reminds me of a uh, the Lion King second one where she's like, "Tag, you're it," and he's just like, "What?" <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Okay, why aren't you chasing me? You're yeah. it. He looks at me funny. I'm it. What does that mean? I blink at him and stop still. Do you mean you don't know how to play tag? Uh -huh. I don't. No, I'm not sure. He shyly avoids looking me in the eye. Wow, you've never played tag before. Really, that's kind of amazing. Just show him how to play tag. God dang. Look, tag someone like this, and that means you're it, and you should just tag me in return. If you catch me, and if you catch me, I'm going to be chasing you instead. I walk up to him and tap him on the arm again. What was that noise? <laughs> You're it! And then I run away from him. He nods his head and runs, taking chase, and we both run after Tag. He's a fast learner, but I've never heard of a kid with a name like Tag. He just, well, I mean, how could you know? You are a child, but he did just say he never gets to play. Either way, he's pretty fun to play with, and we run to our heart's content. I can't take it no more. We play together until the stars are twinkling in the night. I'm lying down on the grass in my stand, 
my clothes are stained completely. Well, now you just have a green shirt. That should probably worry me, but I'm having too much fun with my new friend to care about. If I could play like this every day, that'd be so awesome. Hmm. Did you did you see those four bright stars? He asked. Or did they? I look up at the sky and the stars sparkling bright, but I can't see the ones you pointed out. Four bright stars in the shape of a square. Yeah, I see them. Hmm. It's a star constellation. See the other three bright stars coming out of it? They call it the Little Dipper. He explained. Oh, I see. It looks like a frying pan. You're so smart. Huh. He shakes his head. He's just only an ass horse to be around. Huh. You don't like to eat those things on your hand. No one does. <laughs> <laughs> They're always forced to eat. I don't want to go back. Do you hate your parents? I decided to ask. The boy takes his time to answer, and jeez, that, that's a question. Okay. The boy takes his time to answer. Um. No, he says eventually. I want to make them proud, but I really don't like all their little rules. I don't like rules either, but your parents love you, right? Hmm. The boy shrugs. I guess. Aww. That's sad. And that's good. My mother loves me too, even though she's always trying to get me to behave. <laughs> he snickers at me. Why do you always misbehave? All the time, I reply with a laugh. <laughs> Your parents don't punish you? I just run away when they do. I give them a look. Hmm. You're so cool. You do whatever you want. Oh my god, I'm too old. I feel myself blush with a sudden ad ador ad adoration? Adoration? Oh. Our moment is interrupted when I see flashing and shining out. I can hear adult voices and a dog barking. <laughs> Found the boy! My baby. My eyes widen with fear when I recognize the uniform that's on the roof of the mountain to the playground. It's the police! Hootie hoo! Hootie hoo! <laughs> that's a sound of the police! Oh god, okay, sorry. They're here to find the boy! I'm sure of it. Luckily, they haven't spotted us yet. Uh. Oh no, oh, he just said he found the boy! God, you dumb child. Oh no, I think they're looking for me, the boy says nervously. What should we do? I ask finally. And I'm sure he didn't want to go home just yet. Distract the police or run away. Let's run away! Come on! I grab his hand and pull him up straight. Run! That's a noise that I don't appreciate. I lead the way, holding the boy's hand as we both run away from the police. My heart is beating like a drum in my chest. Adrenaline is keeping my senses sharp and alert. And by the way, if you're a child and the police are like, Hey, I found you. Don't run away from them. My God. Right now, I only want to get my new friend away from the police. We can't go back to his parents yet. We're sprinting as fast as we can, and I guide us into an alley to take a quick shortcut. We're both out of breath, so we take a quick stop after... We finally managed to put a large distance between the police and us. That was hard for me to read for some reason. I start to walk again when I notice no one is after us. Do you think they followed us? I ask. Um. The boy shakes his head. I don't think so. Oof. I was so sure they saw us. I'm glad they didn't notice us yet. <laughs> that was some quick thinking from you. I got nervous and stiff when I saw them. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I smile at him. Just leave it to me. We can't stay here forever, so I started to wonder where we should go. The only thing I can think of is my home. Even if my mother is waiting for me at home, we could get dressed in our hands. Yes, that would be the best idea. 
I start to walk towards my house. We could head. Um, where? Going. Boy asks, and he knows that I'm walking away. My home, I reply. Mother will protect him. No, she won't. She's an adult. <laughs> he says nothing, but quietly follows me like a little lost puppy. So, puppy, I love puppies. Except, when I got home, my mother contacted the boy's parents immediately, and he was picked up very swiftly. Yeah. Like a responsible adult she is. I couldn't even get a word in and was punished harshly for running away with them. Yeah. I never saw him again. I never saw him any more after that day. I sometimes still wonder what happened to him. Well, Google, why are you trying to talk to me? Google is trying to talk to me. Apparently she heard me. Back with post parcel for money label. <laughs> Here's the results from your search. Trump taxes show chronic losses in a year, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right. Sometimes Google makes me laugh. So how did it hear me from all the way across the room? Anyway, okay. Grandma's here. How are you doing, Lyra? Grandma asked with a big smile. Lately, Grandma hasn't been feeling well, so Mother and I went to visit her at the hospital. Oh, relatable. Grandma's hooked up to a bunch of machines with wires and tapes, and it looks scary. It, it really does, especially to a child. Oh my god. I run over to her, climb on the bed to hug her, and hug her. I'm fine if you are, I yell. I don't want to yell. Lyra, get off the bed. Grandma needs to rest. Doctor orders. I let go and climb down from the bed, standing next to my mother. Really? How are things at home? Things are doing fine, although little Ryra, Lyra doesn't want to wear the dress that you made for her. I pout in response. I'm a pouty, pouty person. That's so, Grandma says with a laugh. I used to be just like you, she says when I taps her finger on my nose. Were you as little as me? Oh, I was even shorter, much smaller. I liked to play around in the dirt without a care in the world. Those were the days. Ha 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 ha. Did your mother make you wear those skirts and dresses, too? Mother sighs in the background. All the time, my grandma flashes a knowing smile to my mother. It wasn't really fit for a girl to not wear a skirt back then, so it was like I had no choice. Yeah, my grandma was born in 1933, and, uh, she, I asked her where I was young, because she made the comment that she had never shaved her legs before, and I was like, Granny, how have you never shaved your legs before? And she was like, well, you don't need to shave your legs when you're wearing ankle-length dresses constantly, and I was like, huh, you know, that makes sense, and guess what? My grandma does not have any hair on her legs. She's never shaved once. TMI. <laughs> so grandma was the same as me. Back then, all girls were taught simple sewing me methods. We needed to be able to have skills suited for running a household. Stitching up torn fabric was one of them. <sighs> oh, excuse me. It sounds boring, I yell. My yawn. Very tiny. And it was. I didn't want to learn. Because why would I use it? Yeah, Grandma. Why would you use it? But then Mother cuts Grandma off. But then she met Grandpa. Didn't you? Oh, yes. I met you, Grandpa, when I was a little older. He was riding his bicycle, showing off in front of the popular kids. Then he fell quite hard. 
he had somehow managed to rip in the hole, rip a hole in the seams of his trousers, and everyone could see his underwear. The popular kids laughed and laughed at him. He was mortified. What is my underwear? Anyway, what happened then? Did you yell at the kids? No, my dear, I didn't. Instead, I pulled him to the side and asked him to strip. <laughs> bold, Grandma. Very bold. Mother! My mother yells. She's only seven. And a half. Mother laughs, which causes her to take a few coughs as well. <laughs> Considering he couldn't be more embarrassed any further, he took off his pants and I used my small little sewing kit to patch up the hole. You have a sewing kit with you? Yes, my mother forced me to carry one for emergency set, she says. I guess she was right. What happened between you and Grandpa then? Oh, honey, it was like a movie. We were inseparable since then. He would buy me roses to show how grateful he was. He didn't care if I wore a skirt or pants. He was just happy that I showed him compassion at the time when everyone else simply humiliated him. I smiled the story. I always liked hearing how Grandma met my Grandpa, even though I barely knew him before he passed away. Yeah, I don't know my grandmas. Yeah, he passed. Did he? Yeah, I think he passed away before I was. Anyway, I don't remember the roses. Mother mentioned thoughtfully. Ha! Well. I never told you everything. I guess carrying the sewing kit with me wasn't so bad after all. It did make me meet Grandpa, and so I started taking up a slight interest in sewing. Oh, well, that's not as interesting. And you know what's the easiest thing to make as a beginner? Socks, I say guessing. Maybe. A skirt. Circle skirts are easy to make, and I eventually got good at it. I realized it was pretty fun to make some. Getting to wear them myself was the best part. Grandma gives me a really big smile, and that, Lila, is how I started wearing skirts as well as pants. Yeah, you can wear both. You don't have to. It's just one thing. I mean, especially now, guys wear skirts now, so I mean, it's not like one's more feminine than the other anymore. I mean, I don't wear skirts because I don't like the com- they're not comfortable to me. <laughs> but, that's just my preference. I don't really see why, though. I still don't want to wear girly stuff, but I'm happy Grandma is smiling at me, so I smile back at her. Eh, you are only seven, you don't get it. Okay, let's go home, Lila. Grandma needs to recover. We can visit her again tomorrow. I hugged my grandma goodbye and we left the hospital. Grandma never got better. Oh, oh, this is a minor death. <laughs> I don't know why, but she got sicker and then one day she was gone. Mother handled the funeral, and I didn't know what to do, and I refused to leave my bedroom. I wanted to cry and yell. It was unfair. Grandma was the nicest person on earth. Why was she taken from me? I'm sitting in my room, locked up, and I don't want to go out and beat people downstairs. I'm sick of putting on a fake smile to pretend I'm happy. I'm not happy. Lila, please come out of your room, she begs me. No! I missed my grandma. She was always so kind and sweet to me. She always knew how to make me laugh, too. I start to rummage through my closet, digging through all my clothes, looking for something. Ah, I found it. It's the white box with the dress inside that my grandma made me. I quickly take off the lid and see the pink dress lying in the box in front. I bury my face in it. It smells like grandma's place comforting, so I hug the dress to my body. I'll try here, Grandma. I'm not going to throw it away. I fall asleep on my bed with the dress in my hands.
you finish reading your first chapter and any chapters you've read will become unlocked and you can reread them whenever you want. Try to unlock chapters in the chapter selection by clicking the cogwheels like chapter blah blah okay. To continue the next chapter you'll need many gold. To earn gold you must design clothes for clients. Click on the design button at the top right then select clients. You're also free to design anything you like free stuff and for that now let's go to clients. Randomly generate clients wait for you when you design questions. The more experience you have, the more you learn. <laughs> if the client proves to be too difficult, you'll have the option to delete the request. <laughs> Complete four clients in a row and get a bonus tailoring experience. Okay. Once you've accepted the bonus, oh, it's a big good. Okay. Oh. Alright, pick a color. Okay. Pattern, pattern, okay. Okay, just start to complete clients. You must create a checklist. Okay, first box is the next one. Okay, that's going to be okay. This way, you can always see what is correct or incorrect. Try to get all the boxes checked before it's complete. Then make all the da 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 Okay, all right. Anything is good as long as spaghetti stains aren't noticeable on it. Red. M line. Checklist. Bam! <laughs> Done! <laughs> I've earned 50 coins in 10 XP. Oh my god, this is lovely. Okay, design. I need polka dots. And the polka dots need to be this blue? No, it's not. Bixby, I don't need you to help me. Is that, is that the same color? That is the same color. Okay. I think that's that, and that's done. Okay, cool. This is easy. People question my taste. I question their life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, let's see. And there are polka dots on here. They were green. Alright, let's see. Okay, let's make... Alright. Oh, this needs to be brown. Sleeves need to be red. Collars. Okay. Had, oh, skirt. There we go. Okay. I, I think that's. There's the brown. Brown. Right? There's the brown. I think that's it, right? <laughs> Good at this. I should be a tailor. Okay. Something. Alright, um, design. This side needs to be pink. Blue. Ooh, okay. These need to be yellow. Checklist? Man, I could actually do this, like, all day. This is... Really? Really? <laughs> Alright. Definitely something like this. It's gold and to the point. Most of all, awesome. I forgot to I need to be reading these. Okay. Green. And then they have sleeves which are short and creamy. And then the skirt is also creamy. This. Got it all. Poyo! Kylie, I've always wanted to look pretty in something like this. That's actually kind of cool. Not gonna hate it. Alright, yellow. Lastly, for long and blue. Man. Ah, okay, so let's see. This needs to be orange. Sleeves are short and purple. This is kind of weird. Um, this one's one of the weirder ones. And then polka dots, which are. What color is that? Is that green? No. Purple? No, blue? Brown? Brown. And done. Do you think you can make something like this? Yes, it's a 
and threads and uh, I can use the word so Oh go oh go definitely something like this. It's bold and to the point. Most of all us. Yeah. I'm taking the tech thing just in case there's something out there. Catherine Rose, I'm going to a friend's birthday party next week. Red tank top. Can I just I mean, I guess they are randomly generated. I don't know. Here, let's do something fun. Okay. Katie Kim, I'm back at. I'm back with an even more annoying request than before. Nothing is annoying, Katie. Okay, the thoughts are green. Yes. That. That. Oh, wait. I gotta do this. Gotta do this part first. Oh my god, what is happening? What is happening? There we go, god. Alright, now this is green. Alright. Sleeves are just straight up brown. Sleeves, brown. And the skirt is blue with, is that black polka dots? Yes. I want to do something fun. I, I saw a really cute guy in here. He had brown hair. Please tell me he's signal. <laughs> Bro, you're ordering something just so you could ask if a guy is single. All right. Alright, I'll admit it, I have a horrible taste in fashion. I actually, white shorts with red polka dots ain't that bad, actually. Yeah. Not sure after I do <laughs> I've always wanted to look big or something like this. They say clothes make a woman. I don't know what this design makes me. <laughs> If they have funny intros, I make the clothes. That is my only requirement. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Relatable. It's not what it looks like. I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. Is that pink or is that purple? Okay. Alright. I think we're done for now. I did enough, I think. Well, alright, I guess, uh, I've been doing this for about an hour now, so. I think that'll be it for now. So, uh, I guess in the next episode, we'll, uh, figure out what else, like, all this stuff has to do, and then we'll move on with Neil. Mr. Neil. All I can think of Neil is the Family Guy character, Neil. Anyway, so, uh, I'll see y'all in the next episode. See you later! Bye!